Welcome everyone. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can structure a passive income portfolio using the Solana blockchain. This video is simply meant to inspire you, give you some ideas, and hopefully you can walk away from this video with some ideas for uh, structuring your own portfolio. But just remember, none of this is financial advice and in the matters of your own personal finances, you are wholly responsible. So there are three buckets of risk that I wanted to talk about that you can take when uh, sort of structuring a passive income portfolio. So there's low risk, medium and high risk. And I'll be explaining more about these different risk buckets as I go on in the video. But low risk is what I term, um, you know, stablecoin yield farming. So essentially, your yield farming about price risk, you can set up this yield farm, walk away for a, for a week and then just know that you're not going to get liquidated or the prices of your assets aren't going to get cut in half because you're not taking on any directional risk of course there's always risk with any of these strategies that i'm going to be talking about um, most common risk that you have is smart contract risk so um a lot of these decentralized finance protocols, whilst they've been audited and so on and so forth, and you know people trust them, there's always a chance that you a might get rugged, b might have a smart contract exploit, um, and for all we know, the Solana blockchain could go down again. I mean that's happened before, and it can always happen again. And in those situations, we never really know what's going to happen. So just always bear those risks in mind. I think, you know, it's probably a good idea to spread your risk between various different protocols just in case any single one of them like gets exploited because then you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket and then just have all of your money drained. Like it's happened to people before and it's going to happen again. Although it's not really happening in the decentralized finance ecosystem in Solana yet, it probably will happen soon. So it makes sense to just spread out your risk. So I've chosen like a few different protocols here. So let's get into it. So the first protocol I wanted to take a look at for low risk passive income is Juiced Finance, which is a basis trading protocol here on Solana. So it's built on top of Mango Markets. Effectively, what happens here is that they just do all of the basis trading for you. So you don't have to worry about managing the trades or having to uh, flip long or short depending on the funding rates, which is really nice. Uh, so effectively, what you can come, come and do uh, is you can deposit stable coins into either one of these cartons that they call it. So they have um, the Sol strategy and the Bitcoin strategy. So effectively, you just deposit USDC in here and then it will more automatically start basis trading with it. And they estimate, you know, a 30 day return um, of 10.17% APY um, in the Sol carton and in the Bitcoin carton, it's 8.3% percent APY. So, you know, it's a sustainable way of getting stablecoin yields compared to traditional yield farming. It is unaudited software and, you know, obviously use it at your own risk. The next protocol I wanted to take a look at is Sol Luna. Effectively, it enables you to get access to the yields from Anchor Protocol on Terra, but from Solana. So we'll go into this and, uh, you know, explain quickly exactly what it does. Um, so this is cool because Anchor, you know, purportedly gives a stable yield of like 18 to 20%. Right now, if you stake your sole USD here, you're getting 22.82% APY. Uh, so that's really cool. But how does it work? So Sol USD is a stable coin and it's a stable coin that represents Terra USD deposited in Anchor protocol with the interest split off from the deposit token. So effectively for each Sol USD on Solana, um, it's backed by um, UST that is deposited in Anchor on Terra. So yeah, there we go. It produces these yields by depositing UST in the Anchor protocol on Terra. At the moment, Anchor is producing 20% stable rate for UST holders. But in fact, you're actually getting slightly more on um, Sol Luna, which is pretty cool. So uh, what you need to do is you can buy Sol UST and then deposit it into um, this vault. And then over time, uh, your rewards earned are distributed back and basically uh, your balance of staked UST will increase to reflect the rewards earned. So, you know, you, you come back, you know, every day, once a week. It, it depends really on how active you want to be. The next farm we're going to take a look at is Saber. So Saber is the curve finance of Solana. So I've spoken, you know, a lot about Saber on this channel before, and I think it's one of the most important projects in uh, Solana DeFi right now. So, if you go to farms, uh, so basically what you need to do is like provide liquidity in any one of these pools and then take your LP tokens and then stake them 
in the farms to receive uh, Sabre tokens in return. So if we click here on USD, we can see the yields that you're getting. For the more common stablecoin pairs, you're not going to get a lot of money like 3%, 4%, 12%. But as we scroll down, uh, you're going to start to get higher yields. And with these higher yields come higher risk. Uh, say, for example, uh, MIM on Solana and UST. Um, this is a particularly interesting pair because neither of these coins are native to Solana. Um, if you go down here like Frax UST, Frax Cash, Cash is a new uh, stablecoin here on Solana as well. And so you're taking on more risk because they're not as well known. So your, your APY is going to be higher though. But I would still, uh, personally myself, my personal risk tolerance, um, I would risk um, the chance of cash failing for that uh, extra yield. But of course, you know, if, if you don't want to risk that, then you can obviously go ahead and go into any one of these other safer stable pools or ones that you trust. So let's now talk about the medium risk bucket that you can take, you know, when trying to generate passive income. So this can involve, you know, providing liquidity on non-stable pairs, and you are definitely subject to price risk here. Um, when we talk about medium risk, I'm talking about, you know, getting yields on some of your uh, blue chip assets. So Solana, for example, you're going to be taking a lot of price risk by uh, gaining yield on it. However, you can obviously experience a lot of price appreciation when uh, trying to get yield on your soul as well. Additionally, you are going to, you know, have a possibility of liquidation. However, you know, if, if you play this correctly, then uh, you won't have to worry about it too much. But you are going to have to check out your positions every day to make sure they're correct and you're not in risk of getting liquidated. So the first protocol I wanted to take a look at for medium risk passive income is Aldrin. So um, Aldrin is a DEX here on Solana. You can do order book trading as well as swaps. And as part of the uh, swap part of the platform, you can go ahead and LP in these pools. So if you go to pools and then go from Aldrin led pools to stable pools, um, you can do stable swaps here between MSOL and SOL and USDC and USDT. If you LP in the MSOL SOL pool, you're currently getting 14.63% APR, which is fairly decent. And the next medium risk strategy that I wanted to talk about is uh, delta neutral yield farming. So you can set up pseudo delta neutral yield farming positions on uh, Francium and Tulip. I've got videos on my channel talking about this. And obviously you can do this on any leverage yield farming platform that allows you to borrow the farm token. Uh, so for example, you could do a pseudo delta neutral position on Ray. You could uh, do it on DeFi land, you could do it on Atlas, and you can get quite high yields for doing so. But let's just take something that's a little less risky, has a little less tail risk. I mean, everything in crypto is risky, but uh, you know, DeFi land is more likely to drop 50% tomorrow than Ray is. So what you can do, you can set up delta neutral yield farming positions. Um, I've got more on this on my channel, but I'm gonna quickly cover it here. So for example, um, what you could do, is deposit stable coins here and then borrow Ray at 2x leverage and that will give you a pseudo delta neutral uh, yield farming position. But you could take this other approach to structure a pseudo delta neutral yield farm by cranking up the leverage to three times and then having your um, borrow asset be the farm token uh, as 25% of what you're borrowing and then stable coins is 25% of what you're borrowing. So let's talk about the high risk portion of this portfolio. What you're doing here, you could easily get liquidated. Um, you know, the projects you're invested in could easily go to zero and it could also be time consuming. So let's start first with Francium. So another leveraged yield farming protocol. Um, you can leveraged yield farm a ton of different things. So you can see here the APYs are quite ridiculously high. So 183,000% APY on MBS USDC pair. Um, almost a 100,000% APY on stars. Old Bridge is giving you 10,000%. Prism, 6,000%. So that's, you know, quite good yields there. Now, one thing that you do have to, you know, especially be worried about when you're doing leverage yield farming is liquidation risk. Uh, so if you have 3x leverage yield farming, MBS, for example, um, if that coin falls like, 35% within the first day of you farming, then you're gonna get liquidated. If it falls 40% within the first week, you're still gonna get liquidated. So 
you just have to hope that where you bought is like up only or at least just going sideways. Now, another thing to consider is that the yield is going to drastically go down over time. Say like a week ago, this number was a lot higher and in a week's time, it's going to be a lot lower. It'll probably be below uh, 100,000 um, percent APY. So that's obviously something that you've got to be be wary of as well so any calculations that you're doing about you know how much money you're potentially earning you've just got to keep that um, in mind otherwise you're going to be shocked at how little you're actually earning compared to what the numbers told you and the next one I wanted to talk about was basis trading so if you're not familiar with basis trading I've talked about it to death on this channel before so um, you know check check out my channel I've specifically named a couple of videos talking about basis trading um, you can either use mango markets or drift to do this but I think mango markets is probably the best place uh, due to the fact that you can deposit basically any clash that you want here to trade against so mango bitcoin eth so stable coin serum ray cope ftt mso all clash that you can deposit here and trade against um, so if you're not familiar with basis trading basically it's the art of short selling the perpetual futures and then going long the um, underlying assets. So we'll take Mango Markets for example. Uh, the perpetual futures uh, funding rate here for going short will earn you a 55.63% of your position a year. So when the funding rate is positive, uh, people who are long the perp are paying the shorts and the people who are short the perp are getting paid by the longs. So what you can do to go delta neutral and do this basic and execute this basis trade is go short these perps and then go long mango spot and what's nice about mango markets is that you can do it all in one platform and this will be the most capital efficient way that you can do this so uh, you could for example buy $100 worth of mango deposit it into mango markets and then use it as collateral to open up a $100 short on the mango markets uh, on the mango perp contract so effectively what you're doing there you've created a delta neutral position because your longs balance out your shorts so you've created a crypto dollar effectively that yields 55 percent apr so that's really cool you can actually do this trade and um if you think about it in in tradfi these are like insane rates um but one thing you do have to note about doing this is that you have potential liquidation risk. I mean, this is crypto. Anything can happen. And also the funding rates can change on a dime. So if you're not active or being able to go to your computer often and see what's going on, you might have the funding rates turn against you and you might be paying um, the longs if the funding rates go negative. So that's always something you've got to keep in mind as well. And, you know, if you can automate a strategy like this, that would be ideal. Now let's take a look at Friction Finance. So essentially what Friction Finance does, um, it allows investors access to different option strategies. So for example, you'd be able to deposit your soul into this covered call vault. They would take that soul and then sell a covered call against it. And the premiums that they generate from selling that covered call, they would return to stakers. So that's currently returning about 46% APY. Now these numbers will fluctuate over time. But we've also got 40% on MSOL, 193% on Sabre, 84% on FCT, and 113% APY on your Luna. So if you're not familiar with how covered calls work, I will quickly go into it in this video and cover a few examples, but I recommend you watch a couple of videos just to get familiarized with what's going on. Because um, once you understand how covered calls work and also uh, how cash secured puts work, you'll be more confident in using friction finance and you'll be more aware of the risks when actually depositing your um, precious money into friction and all of the other structured product uh, protocols here on Solana uh, as well. So Friction Finance put out an excellent article on their medium just talking about what covered calls are and giving a few examples. So I'll read this out and I think it's quite good to see the example so you can know exactly what might happen. So what is a covered call and what makes it a good income strategy? So a covered call strategy involves generating passive yield from selling call options on an asset that you own, in this example, Sol. In exchange for earning the premium from the option buyer, the seller gives away the right to purchase the asset and agreed upon strike price. It's important to remember that the strategy doesn't utilize any leverage or any token emissions. So that's 
interesting to note because a lot of the yield farming strategies out there right now, they will trend towards zero over time because they often use token emissions. Say, for example, you wanted, you wanted to get yield on your soul, but you wanted to use Sabre to do so. So you're LPing in the Sabre pools. So whatever the yield is, it will trend towards zero over time as more and more people start LPing in that pool. And it will trend towards zero over time because there simply aren't enough tokens to sustain that high uh, APY. So covered calls is a sustainable way to generate yield. And in fact, in traditional finance, uh, they call yield farming essentially just selling options, right? Um, that's the original way of generating yield upon your assets. So let's jump into an example. So say uh, Sol is currently $200 and you deposited one Sol into a covered call vault strategy and it writes a call option at a strike price of $220, which expires in one week. When you do that, you are able to collect $10, which is 0.05 Sol or 5% in premium. So when you sell an option, you receive premium in return. So in this first scenario, so price hasn't changed by the time of the expiry and it's still at $200. So your P&L is 0.05 sol. So you've earned 5%, right? In scenario 2, sol price falls to $150 at expiry. So the call option expires worthless and you collect 0.05 sol from selling that option. So your P&L here, they calculate to be 0.07 sol. So you've earned 7% return on your soul there. I mean, the price of soul has actually gone down. So you've lost money in dollar terms, but you've still earned yield upon your soul. And in scenario three, soul price at expiry is above the strike price, say $235. So you'd have to deliver one soul for $220, which is now equivalent to 0.94 soul. And you also collect 0.05 soul from selling the option. So your P&L here, you've actually lost 0.02 sol. So that's 2%. But the value of your sol actually went up by 18%. So technically, um, you didn't lose money in the scenario. But what you've lost here is opportunity cost. You lost all of the upside from $220 to $235 when the price of sol rallied. So essentially what happens is that you would come to this vault, you'd press deposit, and then deposit however much Sol or however much Sabre or however much Luna you would want into that particular vault. Um, and you can see all of the uh, information down here. So these vaults will have capacities. If they're full, you won't be able to deposit any more Sol into them. And that's because there is a certain size limit you can take when selling options. So they've capped it at 200,000 Sol. And you can see here the underlying asset is native Sol. The last traded option was a $175 strike price call expiring January 14th. And one risk of actually using friction finance is that you are locked in for a week when you deposit your assets in there and they actually uh, are used to start generating yield. So if you want to stay liquid, say, for example, um, you are going to get margin called, but you have your collateral in a friction finance vault, then that's less than ideal. Uh, if you want to stay liquid, if you've got bills to pay, yada, 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 um, then it probably doesn't make sense to use friction finance. Another thing to note and like a possible drawback of doing this is that the actual returns are different from what you see here. So if we just hover over this here. So 0.84% is the seven day yield. And when they extrapolate that yield out, you're getting 3.21% monthly, 38% on an annual basis. So this is if your stake is not compounded, 46% APY if it is compounded, and only 40% APY uh, once you take into account fees. So that's one thing that you're going to have to take into account is that these numbers aren't going to be exactly what you expect. And these numbers are going to fluctuate over time as well. Like they said before, it highly depends upon uh, market conditions and sometimes you're going to lose money as well so definitely be aware of that so just taking one final look here um, these are all the protocols that you could potentially use the methods the tokens and the risk level obviously you can play around with um, your portfolio weightings here i tend to think the medium risk bucket is you know my biggest one because i think that 
If you're going to be in crypto, you might as well make some money. If you don't really believe in crypto or you don't really believe in like price going prices going up or down and you just want to just use crypto and if you just want to use crypto as a high yield savings account then you can turn this low risk part here into 100% and just purely do stablecoin yield farming and rotate from different farms. If you're going to do that, you know, make sure to look at all of the stablecoin yield farms out there. I didn't talk about everything, so Mercurial Finance, Sunny, Almond, um, lots of other different places as well. Just make sure to check them all out and just know that your APYs on all of your farms are going to change over time and they're going to trend towards zero. So every two, three weeks, make sure to check in and see if there are any better alternatives. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one.